You cannot rely on your PhD program to make you employable. No matter where you want to go after your PhD, you cannot rely on your PhD program to give you the skills that you need. That's why you need to take it on yourself. You need to take responsibility for the skills you build throughout your PhD program so that when you get to the end, you have a plan to be employed. There's nothing sadder than a PhD student who gets kicked out the other end and is like, oh, I don't know where I go. What other skills do I have? So, you need to make sure you're working on this from day one. Well, not quite day one, but you'll see in a minute. I found this paper, Strategic Career Building During Your PhD, a timeline for maximizing your opportunities, and I think it provides an amazing framework for making sure that your PhD works for you and not just your supervisor's H-index. So, let's have a look at this breakdown. It is about making sure that you get these kind of what they call markers throughout your PhD. These these markers are going to signal to people outside of academia that you wanted their career. It's going to be markers such as your um, evidence that you have created some science communication stuff if you want to enter science communication. You have done an internship if you want to enter science policy or research policy. Or if you want to enter academia, the markers are getting into conferences, getting peer-reviewed papers, and also like bringing in grant money. These markers are going to demonstrate to the people that you're applying to that you have all of the skills and also the interest in their research field or their job. So this is how we do it. Step one is in the first year of your PhD, just relax a little bit. Make sure that during your PhD, you're actually building up the skills that you need to succeed in that PhD program. So in the first year of your PhD, you don't need to worry. You can relax. You can make sure that you're building up skills, but you're going to be building up these technical skills to make sure that your PhD goes smoothly. But this this is the thing. Keep a record. Keep a record of it because you are going to just produce a spreadsheet like in Excel and say, on this date, I got these skills and this is what I learned because later on, so you're going to go back through this list eventually and you're going to see which skills are actually applicable to the job that you want. But the first year is all about making sure that you satisfy um, the requirements for just getting through your PhD. So now we talk about the second year. This is important. In the second year of your PhD or the second sort of phase of this process, you need to sit down and you need to work out a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. Those are very, very important because what we're going to do then is look at all of these uh, sort of like things that we need to do to make sure plan A is an option for us, plan B is an option for us, and plan C is an option for us as we sort of like explore the opportunities. You don't have to set these in stone, but it's good to have an idea of three areas that you would like to go into after your PhD, whether or not it's academia, whether or not it's communi uh, science communication, or whether or not it's like policy, whether or not it's industry, these things are very different, but we can build up the skills as we go through our PhD to make sure that they are still open to us as we decide which ones we want. So this is a little schematic they've produced, and I think it is mwah, wonderful. Check it out. So in this little schematic, this is a person who wants to maybe plan A, go into academia. So this person wants to go into academia as their kind of like first option. Option. And then plan B, public policy, or plan C, science communication. And then we need to go a little bit deeper. Once you've got those three things that you want to go into, you need to have a look at the markers. These are the things that would demonstrate to the people outside that you're applying to that this was always your passion, your first choice. And it's about sort of like framing your experience in light of what they value. So let's take a look. If you want to go into academia, the plan A academia markers are technical training, publications, and conferences. Those are things that you need to sort of like have on your CV to make sure that you are attractive in an academic environment. Let's have a look at the others. Plan B, plan B markers. So go to seminars, workshops, and internship if you want to go into public policy. And then plan C, science communication. That's where I wanted to go. So I really like this list because they've hit the nail on the head. That's the saying. Plan C markers are school visits, online campaigns or popular media. So you need to have sort of evidence that you've got these skills if you plan on going into science communication. And the thing is, is that throughout this second year, you need to kind of like taste different events 
different opportunities in your plan. So you may be like, hmm, what's this over here? Oh, oh, it's a conference about science communication. I should go to that. Oh, what's over here? Oh, it's a workshop about public policy in science and research in my research field. Oh, what's this? It's a networking event about um, something else I'm interested in in one of my plans because I can't think of another example apparently very quickly. So just go through life tasting just different things. Make sure you're spending a bit of time getting to know each one of your plans and um, just go and taste. Go and try. The world is your oyster. This is the fun part of deciding what sort of career you want because nothing's set in stone and you can just go out and try a load of things. If things are pretty interesting to you, that's a good sign that that's a great place for you to focus your attention. But let's say you got a plan B and you go try to do a few workshops around that plan B and you're like, yeah, this is really boring. It doesn't matter because what it's telling you is that maybe this isn't the sort of career that you thought it was going to be. So by trialing these different sort of careers, you, you know, a little bit of plan A, a little bit bit of plan B, a little bit of plan C, you end up just getting a sense of what actually excites you. And you start building the networks, the ideas, and you start getting that kind of sense of where you do want to go. But don't worry, you're not committing to anything, you're just tasting. Yum, yum, yum. So in the third step of their framework, and they say you do this in the third year of your PhD, you need to sort of like start to focus on your plan A. What markers do you really need to go for? You can also work on your plan B and plan C at the same time, but this is where you should have a good idea that, okay, this is the area I want to go into and these are the things I want to do. So let's have a look at making sure these things make sense for me. So in this case, a plan A, you'd make sure that your publication record is getting stronger. You wanna make sure that you have evidence that you've presented posters and oral pre presentations at conferences. And also you wanna make sure that you've got all of the technical skills that you need to succeed in academia. These are where you really double down and you make sure you spend sort of like time building those skills, building the networks. And it's not all overdone then because we've got so much more to deal with and this is where it gets exciting in the fourth step. That's three, that's four, boom, done it. The fourth and final step, which you probably do after your PhD or your fourth year of your PhD, is where you actually put together a CV that actually sort of like demonstrates to someone in your preferred plan that you are the person they've been waiting for their entire lives because you've got the evidence, you've got the markers, and you've also sort of like manipulated your CV to demonstrate that it's always been your first choice. Now let's have a look at a plan that doesn't quite go to plan. Let's have a look at their uh, figure because I think this is awesome, check it out. So this is the second part of that figure I showed you and this person has realized that really academia isn't for them. So this is a career transition now where they think plan A is now public policy and plan B is science communication. So they have their CV and they need to work out what their plan A markers, um, you know, what they can pull forward into this public policy. So here, we need seminars, workshops, internship, but maybe publications and conferences will help them in their pub public policy um, sort of like realm. And up in plan B, they haven't managed to do any school visits, but now they've got an online campaign and popular media may actually help them as well with plan A, um, their new plan A, which is public policy. So I really like the fact that not all of the skills that you were sort of like building in this bit, you know, the markers, are wasted. You can take them forward and reframe them in light of where you are going now. And it's all about making sure the person that's reading your CV thinks that this has always been your first choice and this is where you are passionate about. It doesn't matter if you're sort of like changing your, your um, plan A's as you're going through your research career. It's all about making sure that you're building up skills that does actually sort of like fit into where you end up and reframing your CV so that when someone reads it, it doesn't read like an academic CV if you're not going into academia. You need to make sure it actually takes all of the right stuff. And that brings us on to a last little bonus point, which I think is so important in this framework. So here is a little bonus tip that I think is completely underrated, but so powerful because it's what I've done and it, I, I've seen its power firsthand. This is what it looks like. So down here, they say that also part of the aim of creating a network 
um, in your preferred sort of like uh, research or career field is to also learn the language of your selected career. Every career has particular buzzwords and knowing what they mean and how they are used is a key way to signal to potential employer that you have a genuine interest in their field. It is so very important that when you're applying for like policy documents, you understand the language they're using. And so by immersing yourself with a network or in your social media with people that are already doing that job, you'll understand what language they're using. And if you can actually use the language they're using, it really is the social lubricant or professional lubricant. You just so you can slide your way in to that career, <laughs> lubricate yourself into that career. And that is how you signal to them that you are the right person for this job. It goes deeper than just using the right language because they get a subconscious feeling that they like you, they warm up to you. They think, oh, this person is speaking my language and you're in. The paper also talks about continuous reinvention, which is so important because I think nowadays it is a rare exception that someone stays in a career for many, many, many years. It is about making sure that you are happy in your career. You are moving, you are growing, you are evolving into the sort of person and sort of like professional that you want to be. So this framework can be used at every step you're in where you're like, oh, now I feel like I want to go this way. What are my plan A, B and C? I think it's so great. And here they talk about the continuous reinvention and um, often the highest positions are reached by creating a series of multi-sector experiences that complement each other in unexpected ways. That is our long-term goal for our career, but let me know in the comments if that all resonates with you and I'll leave a link to this paper in the description because everyone, everyone doing a PhD should read it. I think it's really, really invaluable. Go check it out. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about what elite PhD students do differently. I think you'll love it.